So next step, I just rough cut this out. For now, I'm going to leave this reference in. But as I was showing you, you want to save your work a lot when you're working within Photopea. <clears throat> so I save it whenever I cut out an element. And then once it saves, I feel safe to get rid of the smart object, to delete it, because that will actually save memory. So the only smart object I'll end up keeping is this background one, because I, I don't need to cut that at all. Okay, the next element is these three that make up the foreground. And I'm going to start with the corner one, which is this. And this is a great example. I don't need much of this image at all. I might decide to use it later. But all I need of this image right now for my sketch is this chunk right here. So I'm going to take my lasso and I'm just going to, with lots of overlap, grab that chunk, lasso around it, make sure I'm selecting the right layer. It's my next smart object. And then I hit Command J, hold down Command and then hit J. That will duplicate. And then turn off the smart object. And now I have this guy. So I have three layers now cut out. I'm going to try to move them into place. And I do that by taking down their opacity and putting, putting them over the top of my sketch. And then I can play with Option Command T, which is Free Transform. And I can play with kind of squeezing them, distorting them. Distort is actually even more helpful, I think, in doing concept designs for backgrounds than warping is. Because it can kind of shift the eye line and the perspective a little bit. So I'm going to bring it right to there. Maybe a little bit further. And then I can distort it down a little bit. Okay, good. And now this one. This one's pretty much already placed right where I was thinking I wanted it. But let's take its opacity down. So I can still see my sketch. And then Option Command T. and then distort, and I'm going to just stretch it a little bit on the edge. Okay. And now, this one, this is where I get to be a little bit more creative, because I get to cut out the foreground rocks of my sketch, right? I wanted it to be kind of jagged and weird. So I'm going to take my lasso and I'm not going to try to do it too well. This is a rough cut, but I'm just going to make some shapes here that follow the rock. Grab that, make sure I'm on the right layer and then duplicate with command J or command of the day. Then I turn off the smart object behind. And then I can Option Command T and layer in this foreground element. This is looking nicely colorful and surreal. It's fun to play with organic textures. Right? And then I can take my opacity down on it a little bit so I can still see the sketch. And really all I'm missing now is something to kind of round out the foreground in this corner. 
So if I turn on my guides, command semicolon, I want the foreground to kind of come around here. So I'm going to use this last reference. And I was thinking I wanted it there as kind of a backup, but I don't think I really need it. So instead, I'm going to flip it horizontally. So I can do that with Option Command T, even if it's still a smart object. Right click within it. The photo is being a little slow right now because this is a big file. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to wait till it saves and I can see its difference on the desktop. There we go. Very good. And now I'm going to flip this, cut it out, and then I can start deleting some of these smart objects that are adding so much memory. I'm going to flip it horizontally, move it down to about here, cut it out. So how do I cut things out? Command, well, I first use the lasso, yep, and then Command J. And actually, I really like this water, so I might use some of that as well and kind of layer that in. That water isn't so dynamic that I would expect it to be moving a lot. I don't see any white water. But I'm just going to grab like a chunk of it like this, and then mostly I want these rocks. So I lasso it and then Command J. Okay, now I can get rid of these smart objects, delete them. If I ever want them again, I have the reference images, I can just bring them back in. And the only smart object I don't delete is the background one. All right, now I can layer them up and put them all at full opacity. So this is my rough cutting and rough placing of my elements. Up oh, and then let me tuck this one behind. There we go. And you'll see some things that just glaringly don't work. Like this shape here, which is coming from this cave wall. That needs to be erased away so I can see more of this opening. And even though these are from different layers completely, right, you can see how I could start to integrate those two together. So I get a little bit of that cyan color into this water. And then do I have three layers of depth? Foreground, middle ground, and then I think I can make more of the background back here with additional what we call texture overlays, things like that. But this is a really good place to start. So what I'm going to do now is crop it again to save memory. And I'm not going to go right to the dimensions of my image yet. I'm going to give myself a little bit of outside edge in case I want to keep tweaking with the distortions. But by cutting it down like that and then by getting away or uh, deleting a lot of the smart layers, when I save it now, it will be more efficient, right? So if I say get info on it, yeah, now it's only 300 megabytes. Whereas before it was probably at the height of all my copies and stuff, like closer to a gig in its size. Now that's not a lot for a Photoshop file, but that is a lot for a browser-based PhotoP file. But it's still very doable as long as you're saving as you go. And I also... I shouldn't have Spotify open. I shouldn't have any other programs really open besides my, uh, my web browser. Like, I definitely don't need Photoshop open. And that will help all of this run better. Okay, the next step. This is actually my favorite step. Is before I do refined cutouts... I'm going to do what are called the direct adjustments. I have them up on the board. They're kind of small underneath Command J. But these we're going to learn through repetition. And we're always going to do the same three direct adjustments. And we're always going to do them in the same order. This is how we control the, the lightness and the darkness. 
This is how we control the color of our resources. And I'm going to start it with the background. So I'm going to turn off my layers, which are all now layered up just like your vector shapes were, to stack on top of each other to go from the background to the through the middle ground to the foreground. But I'm going to go to my background layer, and I'm just going to then open up the next layer on top of it. And then you, you think, what color do you like better? Do I like this color better, or do I like this color better? Because you're going to make them match each other. And I think I like this color more than that color. So what I'm going to do is right-click and rasterize that background so that I can change the color without having to rely on smart layers and things. And I'm going to try to push it to match this a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to keep them both open, but I'm affecting this layer, this background layer. And I go up to Image, and I go to Adjustments. These are called direct adjustments because you are directly changing the pixels in that layer. What I do not want you to do is go to layer and then do adjustment layers. Because adjustment layers indirectly affect everything that's underneath that layer. They're the exact same functions, the exact same tools, but it has to do with what they're affecting. So we want to affect, directly affect the pixels in the layer we have selected. That way we fully control what we're doing. So if I'm unsure of what I'm doing, I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Command of the day, Command J. That way I can toggle on and off what my adjustments are doing. And then on the one on top, I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. And the first one we're always going to do is up near the top. It's called Levels. All these ones, the top four before the line, all these have to do with lightness and darkness. My favorite one is levels. Under the line, all these have to do with color. My favorites are color balance and hue saturation. Under that, these all have to do with major shifts, like swapping it to the negative colors, which we're not going to use too much. And then these are just kind of big shortcut ones, like take all the color out or place all the color. So the first one we use is levels. Levels gives us a histogram. And some of us may have used this to clean up our line art for exercise one, you know, to push our line art to black and white. But what levels does is basically brightness and contrast with the addition of the midtones. The histogram shows us just on this layer, the dark pixels, which are all of these, the lightest pixels, which are all of these, and the midtone pixels, which is everything else. This is a pretty balanced histogram. No huge peaks, right? You're always safe to play with this mid-tone slider. To slide it either darker or brighter. Within reason. If you go too far, you're going to start losing pixels. So you're just going to push it a little bit to the left or the right and see what looks better. To me, it looks a little bit better to darken it, right? To darken those mid-tones. We don't play with the ones on the edges because if you do that, more and more pixels become bright white. What I just did is take all of these pixels and make them solid white. That doesn't look good. And we don't play with this one because that takes now all of these dark pixels and makes them solid black. So instead we just play with the midtones. The other thing we can do here is we can limit the highlights. And that's this slider down here. So if I feel like this is a little too bright overall, I can just limit the highlights a little bit. And that will just dull it a little. Or I can limit the shadows, which I don't recommend. But these are our options. Or maybe I'll limit the shadows just the tiniest bit. Okay. Now, you can see how that changed it. That's just the, the lightness and darkness. Next is my absolute favorite direct adjustment. It's color balance. So now we're going to start playing with the color. Image, adjustments, color balance. And I start, just like I did with levels, with the midtones, the midtone range. And here, this has to do with the temperature of the lighting. We're in a room that's lit by fluorescent lights. These are warm fluorescents. So there's like a yellow tint added to everything in this room. This feels like it has a yellow tint to it. So if I want to push it away from that yellow tip,